So in the event demonstration, you're going to have to show how the title goes away when you start playing? Um, <laughs> that was my question. Okay. Um, let's do that. Because I was actually going to cover that next. Because event binding. We want to know when the, when the media started, and we want to hide our title. Now, remember that little really cool API that I told you guys about, mid player get? That's what you use here. Now, you could say min player get this ID, but that right there has been abstracted because I, I already know what my ID is. If you just say this get, that's basically the same thing as saying min player get me this plugin. But you don't have to pass the ID. It already knows the ID. So you just say, get me a plugin. Now, we need to know what plugins exist in the names of them. Media is called, the, like the actual media that's, that's being played is called media. Playlist is called playlist. The controller is called controller. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> is called playlist. Media player get media. Now, I could do this, but what's wrong with this? Media player get media. And just give me the media. The problem is, this will, this assumes, because you did not give it a callback, it assumes you just want it and you don't care if it's ready or not. <laughs> and you, you will get a surprise because you'll get a, you'll get a null pointer. You have to do this, provide a callback, that says, give me the media, and I want it when it's ready. Now, here's what's really cool about this. As the media changes, if it goes from a YouTube player to an HTML5 player, those are two separate media plugins. This recalls. It, it, it says, oh, I got a new media player ready, and it throws it to all the people that have registered for that, that plugin. So you don't have to think about it. All you have to say is, now I have this object called media that I can start binding to. Now the media, it does have some events that it triggers. I have not done very well at documenting those events. To learn where they are, you, you kind of have to go to the plugin. And min player get media exists in the min player. This is the core media player that I talked about it to begin with. And that is the base. Um, so the base player is what actually registers. Everybody derives from base. You can see here he, he's actually registering himself as the media plugin. <clears throat> now, these trigger a standard. There's, there, they trigger the, the exact same events regardless. And I have used HTML5 as my model. So what I've done is I've basically taken YouTube player and say, okay, and I've tried to figure out what are the equivalent of HTML5 events that the YouTube player triggers. What are the equivalent Vimeo events that the that HTML5? So what I do is I go to the HTML5 player class to look at all my events because that's what all the other players are modeled after. So load start, you can use that. You can use, um, well, you could use load start or you could use play. Oh, okay. Play basically says that it started playing. <clears throat> Which is before what? Is play after load start, I'm assuming? Uh, actually, load start, um, load start, what will happen is, is it'll refresh, and the second that media loads, it will hide your title. We don't want that. We want it to, we want it to hide once they hit play. Okay. And we also want it to show back up if they hit pause. Right. We have two events, play, pause, that happen here. So let's go back to our custom, let's go back to our custom template. Uh, there we are. So I want to bind to the play. And I want you to tell me when that, and I provide a callback to say when that happens. Now, because I'm in a callback, JavaScript loves to dink with your this pointer. So you have to, um, you have to basically establish you're this pointer using a closure, otherwise you're going to be surprised because JavaScript changes this pointers within function callbacks. That's one of the little things about JavaScript that really drives developers crazy, but it's easily fixed if you learn about closures. Now a closure basically is all I'm going to do here is I'm going to pass my this pointer 
Yeah, it's really, it's, I, I almost have, I actually have an entire presentation where I go over this. But what I'm about to do, just, just know, actually, you know what? I'm going to do the hacky way to do it. I'm going to create a variable called underscore this, and I'm going to assign it to this. <laughs> I hate this pattern because it's just hacky, but it works. And then you can use that inside here, and it's, it's fine. So this elements title hide. I want to hide the title whenever it starts playing. Let's see. What, oh, shoot. Let's see what happens. It's very possible that I'm binding to the wrong event. Playing? Um, playing. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't actually... Would, is the is play, the little play button, the same thing as your screen play? I don't know. I don't think it is. Did it? <laughs> you, you never click on it? And there you yeah. go. It was the wrong event. You never clicked on your play button. I did too. Down below? You clicked on the screen. No. Play. You didn't click down there. So now, there you go. I had the wrong event, but it works. Playing. Let's actually do something whenever we pause. We want to bring it back. I hope this is it. Pausing. No. Pausing. Pausing. Yeah, it's, it's pausing. <laughs> pausing. <laughs> Hides. Pause. There it is. So, so you now, with this very very simple API, you can get that plugin. Now, what's what's awesome about this? You can get any plugin. You could get the playlist. You could get the controller. You could get the playloader. It's a it's a JavaScripty dependency injection. You basically say if you need a plugin, you say this get give it, give it to me and I'll let me do something with it. 